Plus, as we've been telling you, it is a no-go for NASA's Artemis launch. The test flight scrubbed. We'll take a look at what went wrong and what this means for NASA's moon mission. So glad you're with us. I'm Julie Broughton. I'm Lisa Bell. This is News 6 at 430, Getting Results. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. Now, NASA had hoped to get its mega moon rocket off the ground today, but it ended up in disappointment. This is a live look now from Kennedy Space Center with a 322-foot space launch system rocket still sits on the launch pad, 39 B8 hours after its scheduled liftoff. So what happened? Anchor Matt Austin is standing by now in studio with more on today's scrub. Matt? Well, Ginger, within minutes of the launch window opening at 8.33 this morning, NASA called off the first liftoff attempt. Fuel leaks and engine issues forced the scrub. Now, it did not come as a complete surprise. There were repeated stops and starts of fueling overnight. Leak detection equipment went off and uh, stopped the fill of liquid hydrogen during fast fill. So crews were able to mostly fill the tanks when they found an engine bleed that could not be fixed. The combination of not being able to uh, get the uh, engine three chilled down and then the uh, vent valve uh, issue that they saw at the inner tank really caused us to pause today and, and we felt like we needed a little, little more time. Um, there was also a series of uh, weather issues throughout the window. We would have been no go for weather at the beginning of the window due to precipitation. And uh, later on in the window, we would have been no go for lightning within the, uh, within the launch pad area. A lot of complications. The Artemis team plans to reconvene tomorrow to review the data. The mission manager says Friday's launch attempt is still an option, but they will know more tomorrow. Ladies. Matt, thank you. And with the launch now scrubbed, many of our New 6 viewers have questions about what this means for the future of the Artemis mission. So we asked our New 6 insiders, that's you, to share some of their questions with us so we could get them answered by an expert. CBS's space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now. Bill, welcome. So nice to see you. Thank you. Glad to be here. And I know so many people obviously disappointed not to see the rocket go up this morning. What is the energy like out there right now? You know, I mean, there's disappointment, but I think the people who cover the space program on a regular basis, uh, the NASA insiders, of course, understand that the first launch of a brand new rocket, the most powerful rocket NASA's ever built, they're obviously not going to take any chances. And I think, you know, some level of problems can be expected. There have been a lot of problems during the, the testing of this rocket leading up to launch day. And as you said, more problems today. So they've still got their work cut out for them, whether they can make Friday or not is an open question. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what they find out. Yeah. And we asked our viewers to send in some questions for you, and boy, did they deliver. Our first question is from Richard Martin, and he asks, is this problem the same leak they had during the wet dress rehearsal in April? Um, it's actually related to a, a, an area of the rocket that they had a problem with during a fueling test in June. There's a system they use in this rocket to keep the engines cool before ignition. You know, that, that propellant is so cold, you don't want to shock that hardware out of the blue. So what they do is they route propellants down to the engines, circulate it through the plumbing to condition them uh, before ignition. The problem today was one of the four engines, they could not cool to the point that they required. It used the same system uh, that had a problem back in June, but that issue, which was a leak in a quick disconnect fitting, there was no leak today. It's just that when they finally got around to actually using the system, it didn't give them the performance they wanted. Now they got to go try to figure out what went wrong. All right, so our next question, and it's a good one, but it's a long one. Eugene Robinson asked, what about the Lunar Excursion Module, or LEM? He says, we've heard about the new Orion space capsule, but nothing about whatever the new version of LEM is. Will the actual landing on the moon be similar to the Apollo mission with the command module orbiting the moon and the new LEM doing the landing? The answer is yes and no, uh, as you might expect. Uh, the Orion capsule will in fact orbit the moon, that's true, uh, but it'll be a very different orbit from the one they used back in the Apollo program, an elliptical orbit, not circular. It'll be around the poles of the moon, not equatorial, so they can reach the south polar region where they might be able to, to prospect and mine ice, you know, for future missions. Uh, but to get down to the surface, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to, 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 to develop a version of their Starship rocket that the Orion can, can rendezvous with in lunar orbit, and then the crew can go down to the surface uh, in the Starship lander. 
Uh, supposedly, uh, this mission is going to be ready by late 19, uh, 2025 or 26. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to get there. There's a lot of work between now and then uh, to make that happen. But the plan is to use the SpaceX Starship for the landing. All right. And lastly, uh, Bill, you kind of touched on this a bit there. Brian Edwards asking, what are we looking for on the moon? We have already landed there. Right. Well, you know, down at the South Pole, there are craters there that are in permanent darkness. You know, the sunlight never reaches inside these craters. And data from orbit indicates there may well be ice deposits in those craters, ice from comets that have crashed into the moon over billions of years. Well, if you've got ice and nearby solar power, you can take that ice apart. You can turn it into water, air, even rocket fuel. So long range, future astronauts might be able to actually uh, develop resources on the moon that would drive down the cost of deep space exploration. Now, no one knows if the ice is there yet for sure, or if it's gonna be anything that astronauts could actually extract down the road. Uh, that's, that's all big picture in the future sort of stuff, but that's kinda the goal of this, to set up sustained exploration on the moon uh, and, and to develop the resources and to test the technology to one day go off to Mars. Again, that's big picture way down the road, but that's, that's the, the themes of the Artemis program. Always fascinating to have this discussion yeah. and to hear from you, Bill Harwood. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully we'll have a successful liftoff soon.